CataractCoach.com. Asteroid hyalosis of the vitreous. Can we still use the trifocal or EDOF lens in these eyes? So take a look at this. Patient has cataracts. And look back in the vitreous cavity and you can see those refractile little white spots, those little bodies. That's asteroid hyalosis. And this patient's been diagnosed with this in just the one eye with the asteroid for life. And of course, the interesting thing is that the patient doesn't notice this. You know, we've seen patients in our own clinic who have floaters, vitreous floaters, or posterior vitreous attachment, PVD, Weiss ring, and all that, and they complain incessantly about seeing this floater in the vision that drives them absolutely crazy. Yet this patient, with thousands of little floaters, in fact, not even that little and pretty obvious, doesn't notice them at all. Now, of course, the eye's just gotten used to this. What the eye knows, it's had vitreous opacities like this, these asteroid hyalosis bodies, forever. And as a result, a patient doesn't notice it at all. Now, it does impede our view of the retina, because you can imagine as light goes in the eye and through these little crystals here, or these deposits of calcium phosphates or, or phospholipids, we can see that it changes our view. So certainly as light goes in the eye, for the patient's vision, it must also cause this refractile effect and must also Im limit image quality. So the question is, can you use one of these types of lenses that splits light? You know, you, I'm sure you could, but I shy away from it. In a case like this, I want to implant just a monofocal IOL. And I believe that's the best choice for my patients because a monofocal lens is not going to have any other aberrations that are being induced. You're not sacrificing any image quality. You're not sacrificing any contrast. You're not inducing any more light splitting. There's you know, no diffractive rings. You're not causing glaring halos. So in this case, I'd rather just put in a monofocal lens. And that's what we're going to do in this case. Now, you could put in the other choices, but I don't know if you're going to get the same visual or optical performance that you're expecting in an eye without the asteroid. Then the other question is, too, is a patient like this with one eye having no asteroid hyalosis and this, this eye having a lot of it, is there some subclinical mild degree of hidden amblyopia? Now, not big amblyopia, but maybe just a little bit. And it's hard to say. Now, we're operating on this patient's right eye and the patient's right-handed, but the patient in testing is absolutely left eye dominant. I don't know if that's just an anecdotal thing, but in a case like this, I'm going to shy away from any type of light splitting or light changing lens and stick to a monofocal lens. So no EDOF, no trifocal, none of that for me. Now, as I take the cortex out of that, here's the neat part. If you look back at the opacities, you can see just during our normal cataract surgery, how much movement of the vitreous there actually is. And a patient like this, who's about 70 years old, we can see that the vitreous has really liquefied quite a bit. Polishing up the anterior lens caps here a little bit, and you can see those opacities, the vitreous really move around a lot. So this vitreous body in this patient at age 70 is more liquid than I'd imagine. And certainly compared to a younger patient who's say 30s or 40s, or even a child where it's almost solid. Now look what happens. I'll put the cohesive viscoelastic in to fill the capsular bag, and you can push back that vitreous. So, so interesting. This is also the reason why if you have a patient where you get a um, uh, rupture of the posterior capsule and prolapse of vitreous, why it's so difficult to keep removing that vitreous. The vitreous is so liquid, it just tends to want to prolapse. So we'll get the eye well here and planting it in the capsule bag. Now, should you use this yellow tinted lens or should you do, use a lens with no tint? Does it make a difference? I'm not, I'm not so sure that plays an important role in this case of asteroid hyalosis. But um, in any case, getting that lens rotated around here. And you may want to be cautious about using hydrophilic acrylic lens. This is a hydrophobic acrylic lens. There have been some case reports of hydrophilic IOLs that are acrylic having issues with the lens itself being opacified or calcified. And this may play a role in that. Here we cranked up the red reflex and you can look back in the vitreous cavity a little bit better. And you can see they really have, the patient has a tremendous number of these bodies there. Now in some cases I have have seen patients who have to have a vitrectomy 
in order to treat underlying retinal disease better. So patients who have, let's say, macular degeneration or bad diabetic retinopathy, sometimes if they have a very dense case of asteroid, they may end up getting a vitrectomy for diagnostic or probably more therapeutic reasons to improve the delivery um, of light to the retina, whether that's laser treatment if they need anything of that nature, or it's photodynamic therapy, or if it's even just for the retina specialist to be able to image the macula a little bit more clearly. And so here's the end of the case, sealing up the incisions. Fortunately, our patient here has no other comorbidities and a normal looking retina. So in all likelihood, it's not gonna need to have a vitrectomy anytime soon. Oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise. One more last piece of a lens material. We'll aspirate that down pretty easily. That's look like a little epinuclear shell there. And it also does affect our view. Notice that our view as a surgeon, our red reflex is just not that great. And so you can see that also in patients who have, let's say, a vitreous hemorrhage, you do their cataract surgery while the vitreous is full of blood, you really lose that red reflex. And here in this case, again, less than optimal red reflex. So interesting case. Thank you for watching. And if you have a patient like this, the good news is it's probably not going to affect the patient's vision too much. I think um, if you do get vitreous prolapse in the case, you'll be able to see it quite easily without having to stain it with triamcinolone. And then again, for choice of IOLs, my advice is, yeah, stick with the monofocal lens. I think the patient would be pretty happy. And this patient certainly was. Thanks for watching.